Well, hello there. Today we are going to do a really deep dive into a made-up TV show about vampires, and in particular, one relationship in this TV show, and that is a relationship between Damon Salvatore and Elena Gilbert. I have a few bits of context to share before we get started. First of all, this video is going to be full of many and pretty much all the spoilers of the series. So if you are wanting to watch The Vampire Diaries, you don't want major things to be revealed to you, I would skip this one. And last disclaimer, if you are Team Damon, this video is not here to shame you, and I'm not here to shame you. And in fact, if I had watched this show when I was in high school, I absolutely would have been Team Damon. I am positive of this. If you think that Ian Somerhalder is hot and you like to watch him be hot on screen and that is the extent of your emotional investment in the show and in the relationship, First of all, congrats on not reading into things as deeply as I do, and also, I'm not here to harsh your buzz or to get in the way of your bad boy fantasy viewing. What I really want to talk about and talk to is the apparently very large group of people who actually root for Damon and Elena as a couple and want Elena to be in a relationship with him and view their relationship as an example of the infamous quote from season three when Damon says, you want a love that consumes you, you want passion and adventure and maybe even a little danger. The thing is, there is a cosmic, gigantic, massive difference between what Damon and Elena have, which is a cocktail of trauma bonding, intense physical chemistry, codependency, and pick me syndrome on both sides, and love, or really any version of love, including love that is passionate and all-consuming. That's not, these things are not the same, and I want to talk about why, because I actually think it's crucial that we have this conversation. First, I want to talk a little bit about what I call the nice and boring to passionate and challenging spectrum, which is perfectly illustrated on the show The Vampire Diaries, with a lot of people viewing Stefan as nice but boring, and Damon as passionate but challenging. I hate this mindset, this binary view of relationships, which is there are guys that are nice, but it's boring, and there are guys that are passionate, but it's challenging. The point when I was watching this show, and I really started to feel insane, was in, I think, season four, when Rose comes back and she talks to Jeremy, and she says specifically that Damon challenges her. He challenges her and that he's either the best or the worst thing for her. For one thing, I just wanna say, you know what's really overrated? Um, being challenged by your partner. <laughs> Life is challenging. Partnering yourself with someone is challenging. Challenge is baked right in. You don't need to seek out partners that are also themselves as an individual exceptionally challenging. You, life's gonna do that for you. And also, I don't think that nice is inherently gonna be more boring and that challenging is gonna be more exciting and passionate. In real life, we love people for reasons. You don't love people for no reason. There's kind of no such thing as unconditional love, especially in a romantic sense. Your love of someone and their love of you should absolutely have conditions. Like for example, they can't murder your little brother. In life we choose our friends and we choose our lovers. And we don't do it for no reason. If you love someone but you can't explain what it is about them as a human and the things that they do and the ways that they work that you love about them, that's not love. If nothing that they do matters or ways that they change matter to you, that's not love. That might be intense physical chemistry, infatuation, but that's not love. Don't get me wrong, physical chemistry and infatuation are incredibly powerful emotions which can be easily confused with love because chemicals. There's this like, I love you no matter what thing that gets romanticized in the media a lot. But let's put that through a friendship lens for a second. Would you be close friends with someone just for the sake of them, with no care to their personality or the things they do or the choices they make and just be like, no, I just, you're just my best friend just because I choose you no matter what. It doesn't matter what your sense of humor is. It doesn't matter what things you do, good or bad. It doesn't matter how you treat me. I just love you and you're my best friend because you exist. I'm thinking, no, <laughs> you choose your best friends because 
they have the same sense of humor as you or you appreciate them and their mind and the things that they contribute to your life and they respect you and they make you feel seen. These are the reasons why we develop relationships with our friends and keep them around. Without the romantic element to confuse things, you understand that if one of your best friend's personality changed drastically and they started to just be a raging dick to you all the time, that might be grounds for not hanging out with them anymore. And I definitely don't think you would find them exciting and like more fun and interesting to be around because they're just an asshole now. Just like I don't think friends being jerks that don't trust you and don't value you and yell at you are challenging in some kind of interesting way. I also don't think that my best friends who aren't those things are boring. <laughs> the fact that my friends are kind to me and understanding and nourishing and funny and appreciate my boundaries and give me space to grow while also giving helpful feedback, nothing about that level of intimacy and kindness and respect and trust is boring. Peacefulness and companionship and joy and trust are not things that bore me. And I don't think they bore you either. I have had toxic friendships with people who are controlling and not trusting and try to intervene and are just a lot and they've got their own stuff going on and they haven't sorted out their issues and they put them on me and that's not sexy or challenging. It sucks and it's draining. So to sum up this section, <laughs> People that are challenging dicks are not more exciting or interesting in some way and people that sustain you and nourish you and love you and respect you are not boring. Just because somebody is those things does not mean they're going to be boring. And just because somebody is a dick doesn't mean they're going to be passionate. You can have a relationship where you have a strong physical bond with someone and great chemistry and great sex and also they're nice to you. That can happen. I don't think it happens all the time, but it can happen. As I was watching the series, I was getting increasingly agitated isn't even strong enough a word. I was getting really upset to the point where I was upset like throughout the day, even if I wasn't watching it and my mind was turning and I was just so frustrated and angered by the direction the show was going and I even talked to my therapist about it and I felt kind of silly. I felt very silly because I was like, why am I this worked up about a show? And then I realized that I was not worked up about a show because what I actually was obsessing over in my thoughts and getting so angry about was the polls that I had posted on Instagram. When I was in season two, I found out a bunch of spoilers, including the fact that Damon and Elena live happily ever after together. And I couldn't imagine a world where I thought that that was the right choice when I was in season two, but there were several seasons ahead of me. And so I posted on Instagram asking people if they were team Damon or team Stefan and why. And I was shocked to see that like 70% of people were team Damon. And I was like, really? I thought at the very least it would be more split, but most people were team Damon. And I also got a lot of messages saying things like, as the show goes on with the character development, it makes sense. I was team Stefan in the beginning and then I became team Damon too. You'll see it when you get there, you know, the show makes it make sense and you, you're rooting for Damon. And as the show went on and I saw Damon not evolve at all, I was so worked up over the fact that so many people were rooting for this behavior and I was so worked up over the idea of the writers of the show putting this narrative together for their demographic which is mostly young women and I realized that basically I'm really triggered <laughs> by the Damon Elena storyline and not that it happened because I think it makes sense for those types of relationships to exist on shows the fact that the show wrote that they live happily ever after together and they have like a long full life as humans made me really emotional because it's legitimately damaging to teach young women that a character who does the things that Damon does can give you a happily ever after because it's a lie and it's a dangerous lie because vampires are fake but Damon's are so real and so common. I wasn't really upset about a TV show and the characters on the show, I was upset about the fact that people knowing what their demographic was wrote that somebody like this will change and give you everything you've ever wanted and be a good partner for you. And that so many people 
believed it. And again, this has nothing to do with judgment of people for feeling that way because I understand feeling that way. And I'm getting kind of emotional right now. I understand feeling that way. I have felt that way in the past and it's so fucked up for the media to be perpetuating this idea that we should seek out and glorify passionate abusers. The process of watching writers of a show glorify an abuser and then give them a happily ever after made me, it makes me feel sick. Let's get into the nitty gritty of it, shall we? Let's talk about his redeeming qualities as far as I understand them and actual moments and behavior on the show. Redeeming quality number one. He loves her. He loves her so much. Let's talk about what his love looks like for a second. He constantly yells at her. He doesn't trust her judgment at all. He removes her agency in so many situations. He knows that she never wanted to be a vampire. She wanted to be a human. She wanted to have children. And she dreaded the idea of ever becoming a vampire because it's so counter to her instincts and it's absolutely what she did not want. And he, through his love of her, forces her to become a vampire, not one time, not two times, but three separate times. He feels bad about it every time. And here's a crucial thing. Feeling bad about doing something terrible after the fact, when the moment when what you're gonna do or not do has already affected people has passed, does not fix anything. Like in the moment when it matters, he chooses for Elena to remove her humanity and force her into an eternity of something she desperately didn't want because then she'll be with him. And he always talks about, I love you so I can't be selfish with you. And that's the thing everybody holds on to. Oh, he loves her so he can't be selfish with her. Okay, first of all, yes he can. And we just talked about that. He knows that she desperately doesn't want a life and he forces it on her three separate times because he wants her to have that life because he wants to have her life. And also the concept of I can't be selfish with you is made up. That's not a real thing. If a man ever says any version to you of you're exceptional, so I'm doing this thing differently, like you're not like other girls, or I'm not usually like this, or I'm just like this with you, run, run, screaming for the hills, because selfish people will be selfish with people. They're not gonna make an exception for you. All that means is that you are currently fitting into a made up internal standard of respectability that they think women should have. And that is not a lasting place in their graces. And heaven help you when they get bored and decide to classify you the way that they've been treating everyone else. Assume that people will treat you the way that they treat other people because you will not stay special forever. It doesn't work like that. Next redeeming quality, he wants her to be safe, right? He's always doing all of this stuff to protect her and to keep her safe no matter what. Except that that's always at the expense of her free will. He's constantly yelling at her for the things that he thinks she's doing that are stupid and just fully removing her ability to choose what's going to happen to her. And the reason is not because he's so overwhelmed with love and respect for her. It's because he so desperately doesn't wanna be alone with his shitty self that he will keep her no matter what it takes. That's not love, that's having a pet that you're extremely codependent on. Let's circle back to this idea of his overwhelming eternal love for her that's like the driving thing of the show. He shows this by yelling at her, not trusting her judgment and removing her free will. If we put that aside for a second and just think about what it, what is it about her that he loves because as we already established, we love people for reasons in real life. You love your friends because of things. You love your partners because of things. You can't just pick a random person and be like, I love you no matter what, you're my eternal love. It's That's not how humans work. That's not how anything works. Elena's personality changes drastically when she becomes a vampire. And he tells Stefan, I like her either way. And even when she turns off her humanity and starts doing terrible things, he's fine with it until those terrible things include giving him the cold shoulder and being like, screw you. And then he's like, wait, now I don't like this. And I know for a fact that that moment when Damon tells Stefan like, well, I love her either way gets uh, positive reviews. People like it. They view it as a sign that he loves her so much that he loves her more than Stefan does because he loves her no matter who she is or what she is. But again, 
What the fuck do you love then? Because all that really happens is she becomes like a worse person. <laughs> I love her regardless of her personality. What the hell does that actually mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that he loves that a Catherine bodysuit picked him because he was desperately and in a very insecure way obsessed with and latched on to Catherine. He drank people's blood before he ever became a vampire and he didn't need to be compelled because he was so desperate to be picked by Catherine. He chased her for a hundred years only to find out that she didn't give a fuck and always wanted Stefan. And so the fact that a human suit that looks like Catherine is actually picking him is the driving force behind the relationship. He doesn't care how or why she picks him. The only exception made is when they realize that there's a sire bond, so she's kind of forced to pick him. He objects to that, but they make it really clear that it's not really about right or wrong, and it's more about the fact that, I mean, he openly admits this, he can't tell if he's really picked if it's like a magical compulsion to be picked. So it's like an ego issue rather than like a consent issue, which we could do a whole separate video about Damon and consent since he compels people, including our beloved Caroline, and is essentially a rapist. Like he rapes and tortures Caroline and then a couple episodes later we're all like, dreamy. He does have a conscience and he mostly listens to it or at least he hears it. He chooses to ignore it and make the worst choice most of the time. But the fact that he has one makes it even worse. I was having a conversation in one of the lives with somebody and they said that they respect Damon because his humanity is always turned on and he like lives with things. And I was like, okay, that makes it worse. <laughs> it's worse that he has his humanity on and that he has a conscience and he understands his choices and still makes horrifying choices. That's not better, that's worse. And he ignores it in the most crucial moments and then feels bad afterwards. Oh, Elena, sorry I let Rebecca take the cure. I felt bad right after I did it, but I let her take the cure, I still did it. I made the choice for you, again, I don't want you to be not a vampire anymore because if you're not a vampire anymore, you're probably gonna choose my brother again since he's objectively better than me in every way except maybe pretty eyeballs. And I don't wanna risk that, so I'm going to choose to doom you to the life you didn't want for the second time. And can we also just take a moment to especially appreciate the fact that he doomed Stefan to a lifetime or an eternity of misery. I'm sorry. He was like, I promised you an eternity of misery. And he promised him an eternity of misery because Stefan helped to kind of force Damon to become a vampire in the first place. Anyway, he doomed him to an eternity of misery because he was like, you turned me into a vampire. You did this to me. So he tortures his sweet, sweet brother <laughs> for over a century and then does to Elena the same thing three separate times. And also when Stefan did it, he was like a brand new baby vampire that was all juiced up on blood and really had no concept of the fact that he was dooming his brother to something shitty and he thought he was like giving him a gift. And Damon's like fully aware and knows Elena doesn't want it and does it three times. So anyway, going back to his alleged overwhelming, eternal, pure love for her. The only attribute that's ever really listed of Elena's that is supposedly beloved is her compassion, like her compassion and her capacity to forgive and see the good in others. And can I just say, I am so fucking tired of seeing women's capacity to forgive the unforgivable be glorified as like the ultimate attribute a woman could have. We are too good at those things. We are too good at being compassionate and we are too good at tolerating abuse we are too good at forgiving. When I see one of my friends in a relationship with a man who treats her like shit, I'm not watching her forgive him over and over again or when I've been in this situation myself going, look at you, wow, look at your capacity to forgive, I love this. No, I'm going, get the fuck out. You deserve better than this. Please take yourself out of this bad situation. Damon might value Elena's ability to forgive unforgivable deeds but that doesn't mean we should all value that and root for them to be together because let's just think for a second, who do we think started presenting 
forgiveness and compassion and tolerance as women's best qualities. I'm guessing it wasn't us, just, just spitballing here. I'm thinking it might have been the people who are constantly doing shit to us that needs to be forgiven in order for them to continue this cycle of abuse and terror. Aside from things we've already talked about, his desire to keep her in existence near him so that he's not alone, the other ways that his love manifests in a literal sense, he wants to have sex with her, cuddle probably, Presumably he wants to have conversations with her, although this one's a stretch as far as having evidence for it because the only conversations we really see them having are when he's yelling at her for being dumb, in his opinion. And for these permissions and continued access to her vagine, he offers this, I will not murder your loved ones on the days when I feel picked by you. That's the best case behavior that's the exchange he's willing to offer and here's where things get really scary I mean they've already been scary but this was the point where I really started to be alarmed we've already talked about a number of the terrible and selfish things that he's done if I listed all of them out it would be like a week-long video let's focus on season two he tries to kiss Elena when she's still dating Stefan and when she tells him no he steps over to her younger brother, the person she loves most in the world, and with his bare hands, he snaps his neck and murders him right in front of her. He forces himself on her, she says no, and so he turns around and murders her baby brother with his hands in front of her eyes, and later admits that he didn't know that Jeremy had the resurrection ring on, so he totally thought he was just murdering him. And then, in season five, when he's supposedly gone through all this character development, so I'm supposed to root for him now, Elena breaks up with him, and he immediately goes and murders her friend Aaron, and then kidnaps Jeremy and tortures him again. This is what disturbs me so much about the writing of this relationship. They created a textbook abuser. A textbook abuser. There's nothing he does that's not just an obvious red flag of abuse. And he's a really fucking extreme abuser at that. He, he murdered her brother because she didn't want to kiss him. And the fact that the show would have the audacity and the carelessness to present to their demographic the idea that someone like that could give you a happily ever after, I've already ranted about this, but I'm doing it again, is so upsetting. Here's the thing, love is a seasoning. And if your life is a roast chicken and there is no seasoning, that would be bland and sad. Seasoning is extremely important to a fulfilling roast chicken eating experience. But if your roast chicken is raw and contaminated with salmonella, putting salt on it will not save you from getting food poisoning. Love doesn't fix things or change what they are inherently. It adds seasoning, it enhances them, it makes them lovely and delicious, but it doesn't change the fact that if you've got a fucking raw chicken, it's a raw chicken. Seasoning won't fix problems and love won't fix people. People have to fix themselves and they have to do it because they're tired of their own bullshit. Damon constantly trying to be good for Elena because of his love for her is a non-starter and not to mention the fact that he is openly resentful of her and breaks up with her so many times because he dislikes the added pressure of having to sometimes not be a murdering rapist. That's actually the only difference between Damon and most real life abusers is he actually tries even less to be redeeming sometimes. Like usually abusers will go through a cycle of like warming you up and pulling you in and tr convincing you that they're great and then they'll like whip you back and forth. But he's kind of just only ever in whip you back and forth mode and he just is hot enough apparently that we're all like fine with it. He says such gems as, are you ready? I printed out, I, I wrote out eight pages of notes for this video by the way and I included some quotes from crucial scenes. Here's a lovely example of Damon being the embodiment of the quote, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. I wanna say at this point, this is when Damon has just killed her friend and kidnapped her brother, even after having been in a relationship for a while with her. He says, I wanted to apologize. And she says, good. And he says, let me finish. I said, I wanted to. And then I realized 
I'm not sorry. Oh my bad, this isn't just that he's recently killed Aaron, although that is also, and kidnapped her brother, although that is also still true. This is because, the kicker, he doesn't want to become a human for her. He wants to be a vampire that's super strong and super fast and doesn't get sick forever. So he says, I'm not sorry. And she says, you'd rather die than be human and you expect me to be okay with that? And he says, I didn't say you were supposed to be okay with it. I just said, I'm not sorry. But you know what I really am? Selfish. Because I make bad choices that hurt you. Yes, I would rather have died than be human. I'd rather die right now than spend a handful of years with you only to lose you when I'm too old and sick and miserable and you're still you. I'd rather die right now than spend my last final years remembering how good I had it and how happy I was because that's who I am, Elena, and I'm not gonna change. And there's no apology in the world that encompasses all the reasons that I'm wrong for you. And then Elena responds to this by telling her that she loves him no matter what and she's not sorry either. She's not sorry that she met him and she's not sorry that she's in love with him. Let's pivot now to Miss Elena and her reaction to all of this. To be clear, I don't blame Elena for anything in their relationship. It may be a little confusing at times when I talk about the show because outside of her relationship with Damon, I do find her to be a pretty useless and irritating character. But within this topic, I don't place a single droplet of blame on her. One of the things about being in an abusive relationship is it's really, really easy to blame yourself and to feel a lot of self-judgment about the decisions that you made and the ways that you let someone treat you and I'm I'm not going to contribute to that narrative and help people send that messaging to themselves I'm not going to put it out there for other people either because the thing is it's not regular life when you're dealing with an abuser and someone that manipulates you the choices that you make aren't necessarily a reflection of what you would normally do and it's I understand it but it's really not helpful or accurate to beat ourselves up or beat up characters like Elena for doing things that are maybe not great decisions uh, when the reason that they were put in that environment is, is outside of their control. So no, I'm not blaming the 18 year old girl for making some choices that aren't great when she's being manipulated and abused by a 170 year old insecure evil vampire man. There are a few things that Elena says throughout the series that really crushed me and broke my heart. One of them is after Catherine possesses her and takes over her body and breaks up with Damon while she's in Elena's body and then Damon murders her friend Aaron and kidnaps and tortures her brother. She's blaming Catherine for it and Damon says to her, Catherine didn't do this, I did. I thought you broke my heart so I ripped open Aaron's neck. That is how much control you have over me. Which, little side note, I hate so much that he appears to be taking accountability and saying this is my fault, don't blame Catherine, but he's actually saying this is your fault because he immediately says that's how much control you have over me, implying that she is in control of his actions. And she says, and I'm still here, that's how much control you have over me, which I think is actually a true statement. And then she says, you put me in a position where I have to defend you again, where I have to bend my morals again, where I have to go against every single thing I believe in again, because I love you. And that makes me so sad because for one thing, I do think at this stage in her life, she thinks that she loves him. And I understand that because trauma bonding and physical chemistry, especially at that point in your life, are really extreme. And that's not to say that, I mean, things like this can happen at any stage of your life. So I, I comment on the fact that she's 18 because I do think it's a factor. But stuff like this happens at any stage of your life and at any age. And it's never your fault if you get wrapped up in something like that. Another thing about that quote that made me really sad is the thing about defending somebody over and over again is that you end up becoming really isolated because the people around you that love you can't always handle the back and forth and watching you be in those situations. And especially in this instance, she's having to bend her morals and defend someone to the other people in her life. And he has murdered and or tortured most of them. Realistically, Elena would become really isolated and really trapped because when you're with someone who makes choices that are terrible and you have to defend them to people, you lose your ability to do it. And so you kind of just fall out of relationships with anyone else. Another thing she said that broke my heart was when she found out about other murders he had done. And he said, so why are you still here? I'm bad, Elena, I'm bad for you. Why wouldn't you have run away as far from me as humanly possible? And she says, cause I love you, Damon, because I chose you and I stand by my choice. Let this be known to all womankind 
you do not have to stand by your choice. And I think, I mean, we are super, super taught to stand by our choices and to stand by our men. And it is not necessary. You don't have to stand by your choice. If your choice murders somebody, you can stand over there instead. And you should. I want to circle back really quickly to talking about how he challenges her and also the comment that Rose made about him either being the best or the worst thing for her. First of all, he challenges her. Yes, because he's challenging, right? But what is that? How exactly does he challenge her? He challenges her to compromise her morals, to alienate herself from her loved ones by constantly defending someone who murders and tortures them. There is no such thing as a person who is either the best or the worst thing for you. And that's not, an, and it's not exciting. If it's not exciting to be like on the borderline of maybe they're the best, maybe they're the worst. No, a person who's the best for you is going to be so far removed from someone that's the worst from you in very literal ways. Does that mean they will be perfect? No. Does it mean that they will never make mistakes? Certainly not. But it does mean that they won't murder your baby brother with their bare hands in front of you when you don't want to kiss them. And I would also argue that a partner that is truly good for you and the best for you is more challenging and in a more productive and healthy way. Somebody that is honest and patient and understanding challenges you to also be those things, which is a lot harder than being shitty. As much as I do love Stefan, it could be a separate video to talk about that because he is not without issues. But when it comes to the relationship dynamics that they had, he always tells her the truth, even when he's not sure how she's gonna react to something. He risks what the fallout might be by being honest. And she feels intimidated by that. I mean, she specifically says when she becomes a vampire, she feels like a broken toy with him. And it's not that he is putting that on her. It's just that she knows she's not living up to the person that he is because she's not honest with him. She's dishonest with him at every turn. Being with somebody who is honest with you and vulnerable and patient and understanding and forgiving makes you require those things of yourself. And it is a lot more challenging to do that than to give in to the most lizard brain parts of ourselves. Having sex with Damon and yelling at each other is actually pretty easy to choose to do. Another important element of why I think Elena feels so deeply for Damon that I want to talk about is something that Klaus, I think, perfectly describes, which is the allure of darkness. And he's talking to Caroline at one point, he's actually talking to Stefan, and he tells him not to underestimate the allure of darkness. And he says, even the purest hearts are drawn to it. And then later he's talking to Caroline about it because she's disagreeing and he says, you've never felt the attraction that comes when someone who's capable of doing terrible things for some reason cares only about you. And that's Elena's equivalent of pick me feelingness and ego stroke to Damon's you look like Catherine and you're picking me so I feel satisfied by that. It's really, really common. I have definitely felt it. Uh, many a times where the allure of being picked by somebody who doesn't pick anybody feels really exciting and it also feels like you can put more of yourself into them and then they'll get better and better because they're giving you this little flicker of hope that you can make them be good. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not mad at the show for having their relationship exist. It makes sense that it existed. I just think she needs to go to therapy and grow up for another decade and then be with somebody who would actually be a good partner to her. I'm pissed at them for lying and saying that they would become human together and just have this like blissful, happy life. That won't happen to you. Somebody who treats you the way that Damon treats her, even in less life and death extremes, but just is, is manipulative and, and mean to you and hurts people and hurts you when they're upset is not going to change and become a good partner. And that doesn't mean you have to compromise for somebody boring. You can find somebody that's not boring that also loves you and is good. There's an episode where when Damon decides to take the cure, Stefan and Elena try to convince him he's being impulsive and show him like how terrible their human life would be together. And it's the most honest thing the show ever did. That's exactly what their life would have been like. He would have been resentful. They would have fought. She would have been tired. The chemistry would have waned because you cannot build a sustainable long lasting love off of intense hormone rushes. That's not how it works. You can build a sustainable and fulfilling love 
with someone who you also have hormone rushes with, that you have great chemistry with, that you have great sex with, that can happen, but just having the sex hormone component will not give you a fulfilling long-term relationship. It will fizzle out, that's how science works. Those hormone rushes don't stay the same, they don't stay like that, it just doesn't happen. And once it's gone, all you're left with is fucking raw ass chicken. If love is a seasoning and the health and foundation of your life and relationships is a roast chicken, then having a healthy and well-cooked juicy bird is not going to make your seasonings less flavorful. You're just not also gonna be poisoned. I believe that you can have a love that consumes you, that is passionate and adventurous and maybe even a little dangerous if you want to go skydiving or some shit that is kind and nourishing and well cooked to the at least base temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit necessary for food safety and I believe that you can have that with somebody who loves you for you and nourishes you and doesn't just exploit you for your ability to forgive unforgivable deeds and this is my hope for all women, and it's the reason that I'm ranting about this video for such a long time. I'm not gonna lie, by the time I got to the end of this series, I was really upset and I had really mixed feelings about continuing to make content about the Vampire Diaries and do the live watch parties. Outside of this relationship, I do love the show, and I do think there are a lot of great characters. It's so many things happen outside of their relationship that I think are good and fun to root for. I just felt like I have to make this video and I had to make this super clear because if you can understand that and if you can just watch the show and get that the ending is bullshit and that you will not have a happily ever after with a daemon, then you can enjoy the vampire werewolves and the Klaus and the Bonnie and the Caroline and the Stefan and understand that they fucked up with the writing in this regard. I want women to be free and I want them to be nourished and respected and loved and cared for and not just be the ones doling out care to people who just take. And I wanna see healthy expressions of love and relationships that are good examples to people in the media. I wanna see that so badly. Please make that. People who write shows, please make that. And it was kind of frustrating too because Stefan, like I said, there's other, there's whole other stuff, but for the most part, Stefan's relationship actually was really healthy, so it was even more frustrating to see the way that they had things unfold because it was like, you had it, you had it right there. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. I appreciate you guys coming on this journey with me. If you ever want to talk about anything, let me know and reach out to people if you need help with a daemon because they exist and i just i love you guys and um that's it <laughs> i'll talk to you later bye